Hey guys, in this video, I am going to talk about cluster concepts from basics to make you understand from beginning. Links related to this session are mentioned in the description below. If you feel something I have missed or you wanted to know more about something else on this, please leave your comments and subscribe our YouTube channel for more updates. And you are watching LanityGuide.net tutorials. Before explaining our clusters in detail with examples, let me tell you the definition of cluster. So what is cluster? In a computer system, a cluster is a group of servers and other resources that act like a single system and enable high availability and in some cases, it will enable and it will work as a load balancing and parallel processing. So why do we need to bring all the systems to be acted as a single system. Let's see an example so that it's easy for you to understand much better. An organization is having a running service hosted on our server, which is very critical for its business. And any impact to the service will cause huge loss to the organization. The service could be anything. It might be web services, application services or database or any file based SHAS, for example, NFOs or Samba services, anything, it might be anything, all right. So an organization is having and running services, which is very critical, hosted on our server, in a single server. And any losses to that services would lead to a huge loss for our organization, all right. So yes, of course, uh, we wanted our configured services in a server to be available continuously without any downtime all right which means 100 percentage operational or never failing right obviously we wanted our configured services in a server to be available continuously without any downtime so that we call this as a availability all right our services to be available continuously without any downtime so we call that as a availability so how do we make sure our server will not go down how do we make sure our ser server will be available 100 percentage uptime? Assume that this is a single standard server which will have a single power supply, LAN, disk, operating system. On top of operating system, you will be configuring some services. All right. As I told you before, services might be anything. So your clients, everybody will access the services via your IP address through this network all right it it is not having any redundancy any failure to any of these hardware will lead to a downtime so clients will not able to access your server so let's see how do we make sure our server will not go down so normally in the infrastructure what we do is to ensure the availability is buying a server with redundant power supply so the server what you have will be having a two power supply or four server supply. So if one power supply fails, server will be still available with one power supply. Again, what about the disk? Then again, we will configuring a hardware RAID and installing our OS on top of this hardware RAID. So if one disk fails, again, RAID will make our OS to be running from other operational disk. All right. Now, again, what about our LAN? If something goes wrong with the network card, single network card, again, our server will go down. All right. So that we'll have a multiple network cards configured teaming or bonding with single IP, which means we are ensuring that to have a redundant hardware. Again, do you think our server will be 100% operational and available without any issue? We have made and redundant for all the hardware. But what about our operating system? Because our OS doesn't have a redundant. If something happened to our operating system, like hunk or kernel panic, obviously our server will be go down. So our services will not be available to the end users or clients. So here only actual 
high visibility comes into the picture this image will show you clearly anything happen to your hardware our redundant hardware will help us to serve 100% operational okay disk 1 goes down and disk 2 will be up lan 1 goes down lan 2 will be active and power supply 1 goes down and power 2 will help us to run the server again operating system doesn't have any redundancy this is what the problem we have in a single standard server till now we don't have a redundant option for operating system now the high availability cluster comes into the picture so high availability cluster is a group of computer hardware pieces that provide solution for redundant operations in the event of component failures here i would say clusters mostly for your operating systems because we don't have a redundant for that operating system till now without having the option of clusters all right so again high availability clusters mostly for your operating system and commonly used cluster is two node cluster or three node cluster but we can have up to 64 node clusters that is depend on the software what we use for cluster solution so what happens if i configure it in a cluster as i told you before the cluster is a group of servers all right assume that i have a two servers server a and server b i have a redundant hardware but my operation doesn't have as well as on this server b as well all right so if i configured this 2.1 i ip address assume that this is my services all right my ip should be active this is my ip address 2.1 assume that i have configured only on server a something happened to my operating system the client users will not able to access my 2.1 what i do instead of configuring this 2.1 on a single server i will be merging the server a and server b using the cluster solution and i will configure the 2.1 ip address on this cluster node what happens if something goes wrong on this server a the configured 2.1 ip will be go to this server b so still the clients will be able to access this 2.1 via this server the client users doesn't know from where this 2.1 is accessible they wanted to access our services that's it they wanted to access our services they doesn't care about from which server it is coming up only the administrator who configured the server will know from which server it is accessing so in a cluster setup we will configure this 2.1 on any one of the server uh, in active mode if something goes wrong on this server the automatically or manually the 2.1 should go to the second node so the users will be able to access the 2.1 from this server b this is how the clus cluster setup is working so we don't configure this ip or we don't configure any services on a single server we will configuring that in a cluster setup so it can be moved to another server so clients will be able to access it via the another working servers this is what the cluster concepts now let me tell you there are two ways of clusters one is manual cluster another one is automatic clusters by configuring the nature of clusters we can divide in this format manual cluster and automatic cluster manual cluster which is nothing but you will have some downtime to bring up the other node with same, same data and ip address so end users still able to access the nfss or any other applications but they don't know from which server they are accessing this is what the manual cluster i told you before that let me explain you see assume that my nfs share is working on this server all right this is my manual cluster setup i don't use any softwares so this is my manual cluster setups this server is ideal servers it is not connected to this machine what happened this is my server i have configured this 2.1 my users are accessing via this all right now this is down my server is down what i will do instead of configuring this 2.1 this is anyway down what i will do i will log into this server and i will configure this 2.1 ip address on this machine and anyway i have the same data on this server right so still people can be able to access my nfs share via this 2.1 so this is what the manual clusters we will be configuring manually to bring up our services available to the client the manual configuration so this will require some minimal downtime for 5 minutes or 10 minutes to configure your ip address it may take 5 minutes or 10 minutes right so this is what there is a downtime 
in this manual cluster what about automatic cluster right here we use some sort of cluster softwares such as veritas cluster hp service guard cluster red hat linux native cluster sun cluster ibm ax based clusters there are many softwares are available which will take care of this manual configuration automatically so what you have done in the manual cluster you have logged into the other node and you have configured the ip address and you have the data so that it will be available to the client end everything you have done manually all right but here all these actions will be taken care by this softwares automatically that is what the automatic cluster it doesn't require any downtime automatically that will switch over to the other working node so still the clients will be able to access your services all right so what happens i use some kind of automatic softwares instead of log into this machine and bring up manually automatically the soft software will configure this ip and will configure the services and will enable the services and it will make it available to the client users automatically that is what the automatic clusters all right these softwares will do the necessary switch over automatically which is already configured by us in the respective configurations which means already configured by us in the sense while setting up the cluster using the softwares we have to do the initial configuration what are the service to be up what are the resources we have everything we have to define we have to configure it initially according to that your softwares will take care of these actions all right this is what the manual cluster and automatic cluster hope you have got an idea on this what is manual cluster and automatic cluster now there are four major types of clusters for our needs all right high availability load balancing high performance storage i will tell you what is it so high availability which means basically active passive cluster all right high availability cluster is a group of hosts that act as a single system and provide continuous uptime high availability clusters are often used for load bal load balancing backup and failure purpose this is this is one of the cluster mainly used in various sectors all right i will tell you what is high availability all right so i told you high availability means active passive cluster assume that i have a two node cluster server a and server b so one would be active and one would be passive okay both the servers are up and running but the 2.1 will be configured only on this server node which means this is active all right and this is passive which means this is being ideal when there is a issue with server a then the i configured ip will switch over to the other node then the passive node will become as a active node all right so this is what the setup active passive node one would be active or one would be passive the passive will become active when there is a issue with active node all right when this is recovered the server is become running and working again we can bring this configured ip back to this active node again this will become active this active node will become passive so either one of it will be active and the other one would be passive all right there is advantage as well as disadvantage advantage is this obviously one would be active at any time but the disadvantage is you have put a money for buying these two servers but you are using only one server not the second one servers all right this is the disadvantage you are not using or you are not utilizing the second node resources you are not using memory you are not using because it is still running but no one is using it it is just being ideal until the active node gets down all right this is the disadvantages but the high availability is 100 percentage available now again load balancing load balancing means active active clusters all right so load balancing scales the performance of the server based on the program such as web server by distributing the client requests or by distributing the loads across multiple servers all right again we'll see there is a two node cluster and both the nodes here are active 
all right active active cluster which means load balancing both the nodes will be active so both the nodes will be running and up all the resources cpu memory everything will be working all right so now this ip 2.1 will be configured at the both the end so what will happen the load or client request will be distributed among these two servers depending on the load okay assume that 150 percentage of the loads are coming via client request this can be capable to manage only 100 percentage what will happen it will take 75 percentage and this will take 70 percentage of the load which means double the size of the load can be capable of this cluster if it is an active passive node what will happen only the server will be capable to handle only 100 percentage not 200 percentage but in active active node 100 plus 100 200 percentage of the performance can be used by using active active clusters but if something goes wrong with server a still clients will be accessible your services at but the problem only here is at that time user will be able to only use this server b but there is no issue with the services still users can be access your servers services only using this server which means at that time it can be capable to manage only 100 percentage not 200 percentage this is the only drawback again once the servers got up again you will get the performance of 200 percentage on this load performance this is what active active node and this setup all the nodes configured in this cluster will be active this is what the load balancing active active clusters high performance and storage or very rarely configured clusters high performance as the name says to have high performance we use these clusters all right and the storage storage clustering is the use of two or more storage servers working together to increase performance capability or reliability to have a high throughput disk storage all right how do we how did we configure this high orbit load balancing for a services same way for storage operations we can use the clustering solution that is what the storage clustering you can merge or you can combine more storage working together to increase performance capacity or reliability these are the major types of clusters for our needs high availability which means active passive clusters and load balancing active active clusters and high performance and storage hope you have got an idea about this cluster concept from the basics all right in the next section we will see how to deploy this cluster softwares such as veritas cluster hp service Girl cluster red hat clusters we will show you how to configure all these cluster softwares and how to use these cluster softwares to have automatic cluster failovers and fallback concepts if you find this video is helpful please do appreciate our effort and hit like button share with your friends about us lanetdeguide.net once again thanks for watching our video